What is up, ladies and gentlemen, Manny here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Technique Training for Beginners. Last time we discussed the barn door and today we are going to take a little bit of a look at backstepping and flagging. Torsten just recently created a route for training that stuff. Um, again, we the route is very short. We can access it in top rope mode. So that's pretty nice because we can use our whole brain capacity to basically get this technique into our routine, get it in, ingrained into our flow, so to say. And before we start, I would like to recommend you to watch um, my technique episodes on flagging and backstepping. I did this as well as kind of a preparation for making this video here. And I gotta say these were some pretty solid videos, some pretty solid episodes, some good, um, you know, technical explanations when it comes to the mechanical reasons why these techniques are sometimes superior in efficiency to just climbing frontally, you know, to just climbing frontally without any technique. So let's take a look at this technique specific route from kind of a rookie standpoint. Um, Torsten will just basically climb it frontally and we will analyze how he's doing in his arms and his legs. So as you can see, um, the arms kind of often very locked off. He has to use a lot of power, a lot of force in his arms to lock off these big moves. The distances are quite substantial on this route. As you can see, the stepping is kind of simple though. It's basically just always one stepping move and one big lock off. So that's how this route looks. That's what this route looks like when we just use no technique at all, basically. Let's take a look at backstepping. So this is here, Torsten climbing the route in backstepping mode, so to say. And again, I want you to pay special attention to his arms and his legs. Now, focusing on the arms, we can pretty much instantly see that he is much more straight in his arms than before. This is something that we should always aim for, you know, when it comes to efficient climbing, um, keeping the arms straight, just using finger strength, not using a lot of lock of power there, not a lot of shoulder power, not a lot of lats, so to say. Um, saving all that energy for the crux, basically. Now, when it comes to the stepping, he's a little bit more complicated here. He has to be. Um, so there's a, some a little bit more foot switches involved there and that's why the whole ascent also takes a little bit more time compared to um, climbing frontally. So in the next shot we will see Torsten climbing the route in flagging mode. And this is kind of interesting. Again, pay attention to his arms and his legs. The arms pretty much straight all the time again, so kind of efficient here. And the legs, wow, just super efficient. We've got only one stepping move basically all the time. Here he messes up the sequence a little bit. <laughs> but basically one stepping move and next move can already be performed. So this is really time efficient and therefore overall probably the most energy efficient approach. Now again, I've discussed this previously. If you want to get into more mechanical detail about this, then check out my previous uh, episodes about flagging, flagging and um, backstepping. But from a mechanical standpoint, I think the backstep is most of the time the most energy efficient uh, thing if the situation allows backstepping in general. If the situation allows backstepping, it is usually also the case that you can solve the situation by flagging. Now the problem with flagging is though that it doesn't take away as much energy, as much weight from the hands, from the fingers, okay, from the, the holding hand basically to relieve the gripping hand. But you will save a lot of time stepping because as we've just seen, we can save a lot of time doing these, you know, um, these foot switches and stuff like that. So let's compare these three um, shots basically that we just saw and, you know, maybe we can draw some conclusions from that. As we can see on the left, we've got the frontal mode again. In the middle, we've got backstepping and on the right, we've got flagging. Now, flagging looks really cruisy here, just cruising through this route, you know, very simple approach, always straight arm, pretty fast here. The frontal mode is very fast as well because he makes these moves really dynamic, really powerful and, you know, not a lot of stepping involved here, quite fast and they reach the top hold quite simultaneously as you can see. The backstepping mode takes a lot more time, quite significantly more time actually, a couple of seconds, you know, with a root length of maybe 10 meters or what that is. Now, that's actually a lot of difference and also when it comes to energy efficiency, you know, as we can see here already, 
um, there is rarely just one technical solution to a problem. We can, you know, climb problems with a lot of solutions. You can climb them frontally with backstepping or with flagging, as we can see. However, um, the question is which one is the most efficient. In this case, it looks like flagging is most efficient because it's not only the fastest, but it also doesn't require to lock off these moves so hard. Now, as you can see here in this um, finishing shot, we can see that he's locking off the last move quite substantially, though in the flagging mode. So again, here, this, this proves somehow the point that flagging goes a it takes a little bit more energy from the arms, you know? but it's much more time efficient when it comes to the stepping. Now the question arises here really, can we somehow perform the back stepping mode as energy efficient, as time efficient as the flagging mode? And this is actually possible as well. Let's take a look at the fourth shot of Torsten climbing this route again in back stepping mode, but this time doing huge cross steps. As you can see, when Torsten focuses on, on making huge cross steps, it is also quite possible to just make one stepping move and already be able to engage the next move with the hand. And this is, of course, very energy efficient. However, you need to have quite long legs to be able to, you know, reach for that next foothold via this cross step. And you also have to have a little bit of flexibility, you know, to be able to perform that. So here we can see another comparison of the... Um, the three shots basically on the left we've got backstepping with a lot of uh, foot switches on the right backstepping with only one big cross step and on in the middle we've got flagging again and as we can see they are all pretty fast but the backstep with cross stepping is here actually the fastest and i would assume if torsten didn't make that little uh, mess up in the sequence in the flagging mode flagging mode, mode would be pretty much as fast as that and the backstepping with a lot of uh, foot switches and stuff finishes last. So, yeah, this is basically the analysis of backstepping versus flagging. Again, I think it's pretty safe to say that most of the times a backstep can be substituted via a flag. And uh, this can be a lot more time efficient because you're saving on unnecessary foot switches and stuff like that. However, it doesn't translocate as much force from your fingers to your feet. So you got to grab onto those handholds a little bit harder. Not a lot though. As you can see, Torsten here 90% of the time has uh, was able to keep his straight arm. And this is always something that you should aim for. This is quite efficient. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little analysis of this um, technique specific training route just you know trying to give you some suggestions here on how you maybe can uh, elevate your technique game up to the next level but anyway guys i hope to see you soon in the next one hope you're doing fine uh bye